Alright, so here's a new piece I'm working on, and I'm going to try and make this quick because the battery's about to die. Um, just a little more technical stuff happening right now. Uh, I just did a, a wash over everything, um, this bluish wash, which is here. Um, I took a clean brush, and before putting the wash on, I kind of wet up the areas that I didn't want the uh, the paint to saturate into and that kind of helps prevent it from you know it just kind of dilutes the wash as it as it goes over uh, what I'm about to do now is just kind of um, do some thin uh, brushes to uh, darken up the sky area a bit and it's it's pretty thin, it's a thin wash, and I have a, and I'm trying to stay away from the tiny brushes because I get caught up in details and stuff too early, and I often, you know, lose some of those cool things by the time I finish the painting, so save some of that detail stuff for later. Um, hold on to a larger brush, and so I'm just going to spread this Thin. What's nice about this brush is, as opposed to something like this, it's it's kind of short, so it, there's not tons of, you know, I can't load it up too much, but it's also kind of short and stiff, you know, and that's good for kind of like physically moving the paint around, spreading it thin and, um, you know, getting less granulation. Uh, it's also thin enough that some of the, you know, if you're worried about it looking all too strokey and, and brushy, you know, if you don't like that or if you want it more subtle, um, doing the thinner washes, uh, you know, keeps that subtle. Also is great for... you know, physically spreading it thin will help it to dry faster as well. So, see, I'm starting here, working my way around. Um, you know, like I often do, you know, I might, um, and I dripped it, and that's okay, because it's really thin and watery, and I make mistakes all the time, but they're just so subtle, and a lot of them get covered up, and so my mistakes tend to be small and thin, again. <laughs> um, so, you know, they're, they're, I don't have, like, crazy dramatic uh, little accidents. Um, and if I do, you know, you can just go Bob Ross on them and kind of, like, work them into the piece. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so, you know, starting at one end, working your way around, and then by, hopefully by the time you come back to something, it's, you know, kind of dry, or if it's not super dry, you know, you just hit it with the, uh, hit it with the hair dryer. Um, the good thing about kind of doing a larger wash over everything, it kind of takes away the, the, kind of pristineness, the this perfect white background that you have working on and it gives everything a texture and a tone and a value and it's you're not you're not so scared. I don't know if scared is the right word, maybe timid, you know, about losing some of these things. Um and that's stuff I deal with all the time because because of my technique being rather thin. Um you know, if I do make a mistake, or if I need to paint something out, then, you know, doing that opaquely is an option, but it's it's going to look a lot different than, you know, I won't have that, that transparency that the rest of the painting has. So, um, you know, it's great for stuff like highlights and, you know, little pings of highlights, but, you know, in general, I try to um, keep that minimal. Um, and let the paper show uh, for for most of the the lighting. Um, and this, you know, it's like 
like I said, like if you're doing like a, or if I'm doing like an eyeball and I want a nice little highlight, painting over that and then doing that opaquely, you know, that makes a lot of sense. But um, I guess it just depends on comfort level um, and style and look that you want. So anyways, I'm going to keep doing that uh, and building this up and I think I'm going to probably mix more of this color and do a time lapse or something. Hope that helps. Um, I know people ask all the time. It's acrylic. I'm not really stuck on any particular brand. It's mixed with water. Uh, eyedropper, best friend in the world. Um, and watercolor paper. This is a hundred and forty pound cold press and it's really nice. Um, especially for you know, kind of like smaller pieces like this, which actually the smaller pieces are nice. They just move a lot faster. Didn't hear that. Did not hear that. Uh, giant paintings, you know, they're cool when I'm finished with them, but those things tend to kind of bust my ass a little bit, so I kind of enjoy uh, breaks from those and, and doing some smaller work. Um, I guess I'll show something else. Another piece I'm working on, um, almost done. A little bit to do on the figure here. Uh, a little tweaky back and forth stuff at the very end. Another question I get is how am I sticking my paper to the board? And it's easy. It's just these little round pieces of uh, tape, acid-free, you know, super tacky. Um, well, except for now because I just pulled them off because I've been using them for a while. Anyways, um, so that's that.